Now let us have a look into the most important theories proposed in favor of the theory of organic evolution. Mukhya Jeva Parinama Siddhanta Al Gurinchi Manu Telusko Bhutuna. Though several theories have been proposed to explain the phenomenon of evolution, they are of no value. Only three theories are worth mentioning here. One, Lamarckism, though it is outdated, but it has got its own historical importance. The second one is the most accepted theory of organic evolution, that is what is called this Darwinism or theory of natural selection. Then mutation theory proposed by Victor Hugo de Vries. Now though Lamarckism was outdated and thrown out at present, but it is worth mentioning why. Lamarck was the first biologist to provide an explanation for the theory of organic evolution on scientific basis. Sastriya Vignana Adharamuto Mottamadriga Parinamani Vivarin Sadaniki Praitan Chesina Vyakti Lamarck. Thus, Lamarckism stimulated several people to look into this and say work on it. In a way, he provided inspiration to the biologists after him to probe into this organic evolution. Lamarck was a French biologist. He published a book entitled Philosophy Zoologic in which he explained the, his version of the theory of organic evolution which became popular as Lamarckism. Now Lamarckism is based on three aspects mainly. What are these three aspects mainly? One is influence of influence of environment jeevula meeda parisarala prabhavamu ani rendavadi most important one is theory of use and disuse which you cannot ignore it theory of use and disuse upayukta nirupayukta sutramu ani moodu inheritance of inheritance of acquired inheritance of acquired characters Arjita Gunal acquired character center, Arjita Lakshanala Anuam Sikata. Influence of environment. All organisms are subjected to the influence of environmental conditions. In accordance with the environmental conditions, organisms are bound to develop certain structures are bound to develop certain adaptations so that they cater along with the existing environmental conditions. Parisarala prabhavani ka anugunanga jeevulu tana jeevana vidhanamu lo konni marpu lo anukolanal ropamu lo chesko valasi untundi. Adi visve vyapitamu. Adaptations are universal. Adaptations cannot be ignored. What is meant by theory of use and disuse? Upayukta nirupayukta sutra mumani. Now, when organisms try their best to adapt to the changed environmental conditions, they are forced to use some of their body parts 
more frequently and continuously when compared to some other parts of the body. What is Sri Ramulo Kuni Bhagalanu, Yukugavi, Upogan Savalasina, Avasikata Air Portundi, Parisralo, Sambavinchated twenty Marpulanu, Tatukune Nimitam. Alanti, Sandar Banlo, such organs which are put into continuous use, persistent use, are bound to increase in their size and become more and more prominent. What you ka, Parimanam lo, Baga Urdichendi, Seriram lo, Visista Baga Lugavi, Rupudidukunta. But on the other hand, such organs which are not put into use lose their significance, gradually get degenerated and may even become vestigial. Now, here, Lamar quoted the example of the long evolution of long neck in the modern giraffe. Giraffe ancestors were like deers with short necks. When the foliage on the shrubs which are in their reach, say, got exhausted because of drought and other conditions, they arose, there was the necessity for them to stretch their neck to reach the foliage in the branches of trees. So in the process, over generations, the neck of the giraffe started stretching and ultimately along with the neck, the forelimbs also have become lengthened. Thus, the modern giraffe emerged because of constant, persistent use of neck and four limbs. Then disuse. The ancestors of snakes were creeping reptiles like many lizards. But because of the protection they derive in the fossorial mode of life, they started say creeping and creeping in the process. There was no necessity for the use of the limbs. Therefore, they have become degenerated and vestigial. In that direction, the disuse theory is exemplified by the vestigial four limbs of Python, Kondachiluvayoka, Avasesha, Charamangal. Then, the pelvic girdle and the rudimentary hind limbs in the case of dolphins, whales and porpoises, which are true aquatic mammals, they are also examples for the theory of disuse. Then, inheritance of acquired characters. Now, when some parts of the body are put into use, they become more and more prominent. They increase in size. Therefore, certain new structures appear in them. And these structures are acquired by that organism during the course of its life. Now, Lamarck believed that these characters acquired by the organism in the course of its life are passed on to the next generation. And thus, after a few generations, there is the formation of a new species. Now, who struck a death blow to Lamarck? That is August Wiesmann by proposing continuity of germplasm theory. struck a death blow to inheritance of acquired characters. Now, according to Wiesmann, the body of an organism contains two types of living substance. One is somatoplasm, which is present in all vegetative or body cells, somatic cells, except the germ cells. Germplasm is present in the sex cells or germ cells, that is sperms and ova. 
Now, Wiesmann conducted what are called these decaudalization. Decaudalization experiments. Decaudalization experiments on mice. On mice. Sunchelical tokal katrincher and chaser. Now he took uh, a pair of male and female rats. He removed their tails and allowed them to mate. And they reproduced. Some, you know, they give birth to multiple young ones, uh, 8 to 10 forms are born each time. And again, he selected a pair and removed their tails and allowed them to mate. Like that, he repeated the experiments for 21 generations continuously. Even after 21st generation, the paradox is that he did not get even a single ra mice with tail, where even a single mice without tail. Thwakale na tu vanti, vokka chunchaluko koda, iravayokka taraluga, vati talidandurlu thwakal tholagishtu vachina ayanaki labhinsala. That means, this change, loss of tail, affected only somatoplasm. Germplasm remained unaffected. So, according to Wiesmann, whatever change that occurs in the course of the life of an individual affects only somatoplasm but not the germplasm. If at all any change occurs in the germplasm, that is sex cells, then only it is likely to be passed on to the next generation. Therefore, he condemned Lamar's theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Likewise, from our day-to-day -day life also, we can say that acquired characters are not hereditary. As per Hindu way of life, we make perforations to the female children in the first year. We have been repeating this since immemorial times. Is there any child born with preformed perforations, perforations already made? No, we have been repeating it because this ear boring to wear ear rings, ear studs is only a change in the somatoplasm. Likewise, a blacksmith is there who uses his muscles, a weightlifter is there, who developed a strong musculature, six body pack, antonomanum. So, Ila Kandara pushed to Oka Vektiki, Tana Jivita Kalamlo, Tana Chesator to Vanti, Parisrema Valla, exercises Valla, Vyayam Valla Airport. That does not mean he is likely to get a child with a strong body born with a six packs body, certainly not. So like that you can quote empty number of examples uh, discarding this uh, inheritance of acquired characters. Acquired characters are not hereditary, they are not likely to be passed on to the next generation. Now, some scientists who believed there is some truth at least in the theory of use and disuse, they were referred to as Neo-Lamarckians. Neo-Lamarckians. They conducted some experiments in favor of this inheritance of acquired characters, Arjata Gunala, Anuamsikat Kanugulanga, Alage, theory of use and disuse, Upayukta, Nirupayukta, Sutraani Kanugulanga, Konni Prayogalu, Jariparu. Walalo Manaki Cope Osborne Packard and Spencer MacDougall. We refer them as 
neo lamarckians now paul camerar paul camerar conducted experiments on a blind salamander proteus anguinus it is a blind salamander why it has become blind it is a cave dweller in the absence of light over years eyes have become degenerated and for the development of melanin pigment exposure to light is a must therefore in the eyes, absence of light the body become pale so macdougal exposed this proteus anguinus in the lab to light for several days he observed not only repigmentation but regeneration of its eyes also therefore he provided some evidence for inheritance of acquired characters but others ridiculed it on various grounds so that is about neo lamarckians now we pass on to the study of the most important theory of organic evolution that is darwinism or theory of natural selection proposed by charles darwin now charles darwin was a british naturalist he was the son of a doctor his grandfather erasmus darwin was a naturalist he wrote a book zoonomia in which he described the influence of environment on living things so right from his childhood darwin was brought up in a perfect scientific academic environment father was a doctor grandfather was a naturalist also thus darwin was influenced right from his childhood to study the secrets of nature at a very young age darwin became a dropout from his medical college vaidya kalasalalo admission pondi adu naaku ishtam ledanu enakke tirigochadu then he started writing articles on nature in various periodicals daily papers in england therefore he became popular as a bedding naturalist oka yuva prakruti శాస్త్రవేత్తగా ఆయన ఇరవై ఏళ్ళ లోపు వయసులోనే మంచి పేరు ప్రఖ్యాతలు పొందాడు సో హీ వాజ్ డ్రాఫ్టెడ్ ఆన్ ద బోర్డ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ ఓషనోగ్రాఫిక్ వెసల్ బై నేమ్ హెచ్ఎంఎస్ బీగిల్ యాజ్ న్యాచురలిస్ట్ సో అలాంగ్ విత్ దట్ క్రూ డార్విన్ ట్రావెల్డ్ several parts of globe for over 5 years visited several islands continents which nobody visited by that time so in the course of his journey or voyage around the globe darwin happened to land at a cluster of islands galapagos islands which became popular as living laboratories of evolution they are a cluster of islands in the pacific ocean near south america there the attention of darwin was drawn by finch birds which became popular as darwin's finches darwin observed what is called the phenomenon of adaptive radiation in the beaks of these finch birds the ancestral finch which migrated to the galapagos islands from the nearest south american continent was a seed eater but from that seed eating finch 
Darwin observed finches of nearly 10 types of beaks. Therefore, Darwin mentioned the phenomenon of adaptive radiation. When members of a species, one or more species, migrate in different directions and try to adapt themselves to the new habitats, they differ more and more from them by affecting modifications, evolving adaptations. And the phenomenon is called adaptive radiation. The product of adaptive radiation is called divergent evolution. Now, what are the essential features of Darwin? Darwin published his book, Origin of Species, which was a sensation in the European countries. All copies of the book were sold out on the very day of the publication. Prachurinchina Rosalone Matam Kapilani Atsuvesina Waka Rosalone Matam Kapilani Amudubuye. Like uh, Untold Story by General Kaul or this uh, Arundhati Rai book. Like this Ala sensation Endamuri Virandanadgari Yoka Tulsi Dalam Ilanti Vani Atsuina Rosune Anni Kapilu Amudubotum Adivoka sensation. Allah Darwin published the book Origin of Species. Jatra Srusti Aladarigin Dantadu Prakurti Varna Waladarindi by natural selection. By natural selection. Now this natural cell theory of natural selection is formulated because of the influence he got from Malthus' theory of essay on say principles of population and geology of the, written by Charles Lyell. Now these two influenced Charles Darwin in propounding this theory of natural selection. And he also received a letter from his contemporary, much younger to him, Alfred Russell Wallace. He appreciated Wallace also. Wallace was inspired by knowing the work of Charles Darwin also. That way, they were contemporaries like uh, Drona and uh, Ekalavya, Guru and uh, Sishyas. And then coming to the salient features of Darwinism, Darwinism is discussed under these heads. Under these heads. These are three truths, universal occurrence of truths. That is, one is prodigality of production or overproduction atyutpati pratijati atyadikanga santanotpati jarutundani prodigality of production which is also called overproduction atyutpati anantam now the second one is anta atyutpati jarigina there is constancy in the size of population. A janabha parimanamulo paddaga pirugula tala ledu sthiratvanga untundi anta achyutpatti jarigina. Moodavadi vachi struggle for existence achyutpatti jarigina pudu there will be limitation of food and shelter which become limiting factors due to which there will be struggle for existence. Avasaral vogitiga untai kapatti, avasaral parimitanga untai kapatti, jeevula macha manugada kosam poratan zarutundi. 
నాలుగవది యూనివర్సల్ అక్కరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ వేరియేషన్స్ యూనివర్సల్ అక్కరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ వేరియేషన్స్ అంటే విశ్వవ్యాపిత వైవిధ్యాలు ఐదవది న్యాచురల్ సెలెక్షన్ ప్రకృతి వరణం అండ్ ద లాస్ట్ వన్ ఈజ్ ఆరిజిన్ ఆఫ్ ఆరిజిన్ ఆఫ్ స్పీషీస్ జాతుల సృష్టి ఇవి ప్రోడిగాలిటీ ఆఫ్ ప్రొడక్షన్ ఆర్ ఓవర్ ప్రొడక్షన్ ఎవ్రీ ఆర్గానిజం రీప్రొడ్యూసెస్ ఇట్స్ యంగ్ ఇన్ లార్జ్ నంబర్స్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఏ ప్రోక్యారియాట్ లైక్ నాట్ ప్రోక్యారియాట్ ఏ యూకారియాటిక్ యూనిసెల్యులర్ ఆర్గానిజం లైక్ పారమీషియం మల్టీప్లైస్ బై బైనరీ ఫిషన్ at the rate of 3 to 4 times a day so after 5 years the progeny formed by a single paramecium would need the volume of would need the volume which is 10000 times as big as that of the earth so ee akana jantu ainatuvanti paramecium vidavichati dwara rojuku 3 4 saarlu prachutpati jarugutu potu unte ఐదు సంవత్సరాలు గడిచేసరికి అది మొత్తం మనకి ఆ జీవులు ఆ సంతతి ఆక్రమించడానికి భూగోళానికి పదివేల రెట్ల జాగా కావాలి అని ఎక్కడుంది అంత ఎక్కడున్నాయి అంటే దే ఆర్ గెటింగ్ వైప్డ్ అవు పోతున్నాయి అని అలా నిర్ణీత సంఖ్యలోనే ఉంటున్నాయి అని అర్థం రెండవది దిస్ సాల్మన్ and also oysters they also produce millions of eggs and many of them perish before fertilization after fertilization before hatching so ultimately a few of them will survive to become mature adults and reproduce rest are wiped out even the slowest breeder like an elephant which produces only one egg and which comes to maturity after 7 or 8 years very slowest breeder and it can produce say 19 millions where are they what happened so they are also getting wiped out in the struggle for existence only a limited number is retained then constancy in the size of population though the progeny is formed in mi- millions or in large number but the size of the population after few generations remained more or less the same that means many of them are say lost at different stages then struggle for existence now struggle for existence ante manugada kosam poratam it is of three types one most important one intra specific struggle b b is inter specific struggle inter specific struggle c struggle with the environment struggle with n y n y rounds or environment struggle with the environment intra specific struggle ante it is the competition within the members of the same species it is the competition within the members of the same species oka jati jeevula machya vache poratam this is the severest form of struggle this is the severe check on this size of the population because the necessities are one and the same the requirements are one and the same they compete for same type of food 
same type of shelter and same type of mate. Therefore, this is the most intensive form of competition or struggle, intraspecific. Next, interspecific. Now, when compared to intraspecific struggle, interspecific struggle is less severe because it is the competition between members of different species or different populations where the basic necessities may be different. Therefore, it is not that intense unless they are carnivores and predators. Usually, they fight or they try to say outwit the lesser powerful organisms that is interspecific. Then struggle with the environment. Now, Prakurti Sektulato Poratam Anyantunam. This is the very important one because human evolution faced several natural calamities even till today also we have been facing calamities in the form of floods, tsunamis, storms, famines, epidemic diseases, so on and so forth, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, these are all natural calamities that will put an end to millions of lives in a very short span of time. Allah Janabhala Ninita Sankhya Kudinsa Burtuna Yi Bautika Sektula Vijurumbana Valana Dan Yavarum Adiga Minsale In spite of our say advanced technological knowledge, we cannot say overcome or prevent what is called this tsunami or Hudhut Tufan. Next after this struggle for existence, three types. Now, universal occurrence of variations. Visva Vyapita Vaivithyal. Now, no two individuals are alike, Nana. Even identical twins can be, say, identified from one another by certain things, moles or some mannerisms. Then, so no two members are alike. There are Differences between parents and their children. There are differences be among sisters of the same family, brothers of the same family, and cousins also. Oka Talidandula Santana Akka Chelala Anada Mulu Andaru Vitika Undaru, Alaga Pernabba, Padabba, Manma, Yi Pilalamaja Kuni Polikaluna, Bedalu Swastanga, Mana Kanpistu Untai, Ala variations and Avi. Vidiga Manaki Jula Maja Tarasa Padu Unta Yen. Now, in the struggle for existence, the organisms with useful variations get more opportunities to perpetuate themselves than the organisms with harmful variations. Organisms with harmful variations are not selected by nature. Harbans, organisms with useful variations are favored by nature. And these useful variations, that is the adaptations, are characters which are, say, internal changes. They are, say, heritable. They are passed on to the next generation. After a few, uh, after some generations, they become more and more prominent and that will lead to the formation of a new species. Ila upayukta vaividhyalu, nirupayukta vaividhyalu ane rondu rokalaga akkada vibhajin chukuntu namanu. Yakkadaite useful variations suntayo. Avi ye manugadu kosun jarige poraton lo vijayam sadhisthay. Yala gante, inta mundu chukku namanu madat class lo. In the opinion of Darwin, Fitness means reproductive fitness. Those organisms which are reproductively successful, they alone produce a large number of progeny that will reach the again maturity and reproductive age. Thus, they perpetuate themselves. 
the other forms with harmful variations will be wiped out antanu ala variations anevi okappudu manu parinamaniki variations are the raw materials of organic evolution anukune vallam aithe ippudu aa variations raavatani kaaranam enti ante mutations antunu andukone at present mutations are the raw materials of organic evolution annu next universal occurrence of variations ela untay ante ippudu a shepherd maintains a flock of say 4 to 500 sheep all of them are not his own it is a collection for his rearing he is paid for each sheep by the owner at times so when the owner comes and claims for that sheep for his sheep the shepherd goes into the flock and recognizes that specific sheep by virtue of its coat color or size of its ears or some spot on its face and drags it holding its ear its ear pin and hands it over to the owner so here what helped the shepherd in recognizing one sheep from the other that is nothing but variation either in their coat color or body spots or height or that stoutiness then that is universal occurrence of natural selection now this is the most important thing whichever organism has useful variations in the struggle for existence that will be benefited and those organisms with beneficial variations are selected by nature and they perpetuate in course of time and a new species originated from that that way origin of new species is due to what is called natural selection that is why the theory became popular as theory of natural selection now here darwin is on natural selection origin of species now darwin believed in small fluctuating continuous variations anna idi darwin pablo kalesad ant darwin parinamam anedi chaala nemmadiga sanchaitamga jarigetatuvanti dolayana vaividhyala valla jarugutundi ani annam tarvata divris dani kandinchadu divris believed that origin of new species is due to mutation a sudden abrupt change anna ఇది నత్త నరకలాగా పరిణామం జరుగుతుందంటే అది గుర్రపు గెంతులాగా జరుగుతుంది అని అక్కడ అర్థం మనకు వస్తుంది అని డార్విన్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్డ్ ఓన్లీ సర్వైవల్ ఆఫ్ ది ఫిట్టెస్ట్ నో ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ షన్ ఫార్ ద అరైవల్ ఆఫ్ ఫిట్టెస్ట్ రెండోది డార్విన్ ఫోకస్డ్ ఆన్ స్మాల్ దట్ ఈజ్ క్యూములేటివ్ సంచయిత ప్రభావం క్యూములేటివ్ ఎఫెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ స్మాల్ క్యూములేటివ్ ఎఫెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ స్మాల్ ఫ్లక్చువేటింగ్ fluctuating variations ante oka rakamga dolayana chinna vaividhyala sancheta prabhavaniki ayane gurtinchadu ante gaani he recognized the variations um mudo de enti ante on no explanation no explanation there is no explanation for the occurrence of 
for the occurrence of vestigial organs nana for the occurrence of vestigial organs pani levu aina appudu poorthiga adrushyam avachuga enduku unnai avi a rudimentary condition lo anedi alage deento paatu no explanation for the presence of certain over developed structures in some extinct forms of life udaharanaki ikkada manaki long tusks in jefferson's mammoth if the long tusks had been useful to it it would not have become extinct so no explanation alage antlers pedda kumulu unnai antlers in irish deer nana irish deer so these are some interesting objections raised against what is called darwinism ani anna now huxley fisher devenport and also kettlewell these are scientists who conducted some experiments in support of the theory of natural selection and they became popular as neo darwinians and they proposed what is called this synthetic theory of now before we take up the industrial melanism let me explain about what is called de vries theory of mutation victor hugo de vries proposed this mutation theory on the basis of his experiments with unothera lamarckiana a plant growing in wild in amsterdam de vries was a dutch naturalist now he observed different types of mutant plants in this particular form unothera lamarckiana there he observed unothera brevi stylis ante potti kelam unnatuvanti mukka brevi stylis alage unothera lamarckiana leevi folia pedda aakulu unnatuvanti kanapadindi abnormal ga next unothera lamarckiana jaygaus podu ekkuga undi ఈనోతెరా లెమార్కియానా నానెల్లా నానో అంటే చిన్నది ఉద్యోడు అన్నట్టుగా నానెల్లా అని ఎత్తు తక్కువగా ఉండే పొట్టి మొక్కలు సో ఇలా నాలుగు రకాలు ఆయనకి లభించాయి ఇవి దే వర్ ఆల్ ఫౌండ్ టు బ్రీడ్ ట్రూ వాటిల్లో ఆయన ఆత్మపరాగ సంపర్కం జరిగితే ఏ రకం ఆ రకం సంతతినే తరతరాలుగా ఉత్పత్తి చేశాయి సో అప్పుడు ఆయన he proposed this what is called mutation theory ani so de vries mentioned mutations are the causes of variations ani anna mutation ante sudden or abrupt change ani artham akkada now what are these mutations ante it is a sudden or abrupt change either in the gene structure or in the chromosome number or in the structure of chromosomes now mutation theory is accepted as a modification for darwinism because darwin could not explain the arrival of the fittest now arrival of the fittest means through beneficial variations beneficial variations how do they come beneficial variations are due to mutations now morgan also studied the inheritance of mutations in what is called this drosophila melanogaster 
mutations are discontinuous mutations do not accumulate Mute mutations are not say incomplete they are full fledged always mutations mutations are mostly recessive in nature mutations are also sometimes harmful so these are certain attributes of mutations mutations occur in a random manner so that is about mutation theory now industrial melanism it was conducted in support of the theory of natural selection industrial melanism parisramika shyamali karanamu anena there was the peppered moth biston betularia biston betularia peppered moth ఈ పెప్పర్డ్ మాత్ బిస్టన్ బెచ్యులేరియాలో రెండు రకాలు ఉన్నాయి మనకి ఒకటి గ్రే కలర్డ్ లేదా వైట్ వింగ్డ్ ఫామ్ ఇంకోటి డార్క్ కలర్డ్ ఆర్ బ్లాక్ వింగ్డ్ ఫామ్ అని ఇవి బిఫోర్ ది ఆన్సెప్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండస్ట్రియలైజేషన్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లాండ్ వెన్ ద కౌంట్ వాజ్ మేడ్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ were found to be white winged moths very few are found to be black winged forms but when the collection was made after the post industrialization when there was a lot of pollution because of release of soot coal dust fly ash from the say coal burning chimneys of iron textile cement factories in and around manchester lancashire birmingham all the tree bark got blackened so the black winged forms could not be detected by these predaceous birds because their body color matched with the color of the surrounding dark colored bark that means here nature favored the dark colored forms because the surroundings provided protection to them the body color matched with the color of the surroundings therefore they could not be spotted by the predaceous birds but prior to the onset of industrialization parisramika viplavam raakamundu parisramala sthapana jaragaka mundu 1850 lo census teesinappudu vaati collection count chesinappudu appudu dull color gray color or white winged forms ekkuga unnai janabala 80 saatam unnai avi enduku ante appudu kalushyam ledhu the whole tree bark is covered by the white lichens therefore the dull body color or the white winged forms got merged with the surrounding white background therefore they could not be detected by the predaceous birds therefore prior to industrialization when there was no pollution white colored or gray colored biston betularia was predominant but post industrialization seen census was made in birmingham manchester you find 80% nearly black forms because the whole surroundings all the tree bark got darkened because of deposition of fly ash soot and coal dust thus here in support of this kettlewell 
Bernard Kittilwell conducted experiment. He selected equal number of white winged and dark winged moths and a set was let out in the surroundings of a rural area where there was no pollution at present that area was door set and another one industrial area birmingham birmingham equal number say 1000 ikkada 1000 la 500 avi 500 avi ikkada 500 avi 500 avi vadiladu but after some time he recollected them when he recollected and recounted them in the dorset area 80 percent em unnai ante white winged unnai in the birmingham area em unnai ante 80 percent vachi black winged because of the change in the color of the surroundings here the black color after industrialization got merged with the black and surroundings of the trees are bark and they could not be spotted by the predaceous birds prior to industrialization parisramika no raaka mundu 1850 lo paristhiti lagane ee dorset lo pudu unna paristhiti kalushya rahita parisram undi kabatti appude ela aithe manaki white winged flies moths predominant ga unnayo ippudi kuda manaki ee pollution lenatuvanti pollution lenatuvanti clarity of environment unnatuvanti dorset parisramulo ye moths ekku ga untayi ante white winged moths ekku ga unnai now let me draw your attention here for the lichens you know lichens are symbiotic forms a algal component phycobiont and a fungal component mycobiont live together uh, and mycobiont provides substratum and minerals for the growth of uh, phycobiont and phycobiont provides food to the mycobiont thus lichens uh, form this uh, symbiotic association and this lichens and this lichens form a pollution indicator wherever there is no air pollution you find plenty of lichens so if you want to set up an hospital after you become a doctor you would go around the outskirts of the city and there you would search for one vegetation that vegetation is lichens if you find plenty of lichens you can infer that there is no air pollution that environment is clean and that is fit for the establishment of your hospital now you look at this before onset of industrial revolution more winged white winged flies ncrt book lo white winged annamu mana academy pustakam lo grey colored flies dark colored or melanic anna melanic anedi rendu chotla upayoginchaam grey bodulu deentlo వైట్ వింగ్డ్ అని అన్నాడు అందుకని నేను అదే తీసుకున్నాను ఇక్కడ ఇక్కడ చూడండి ప్రయర్ టు ఇండస్ట్రియలైజేషన్ వైట్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్లో మెర్జ్ అయిపోయింది ఈ వైట్ వింగ్స్ ఉన్నటువంటి బిస్టన్ బెట్రిల్ ఏరియా బ్లాక్ది ప్రొడామినెంట్గా కనిపిస్తుంది ప్రిడేషియస్ బర్డ్స్ సులభంగా దాన్ని గుర్తించి వాటిని తినేశాయి నా వెన్ యూ లుక్ అట్ దిస్ సీన్ పోస్ట్ ఇండస్ట్రియలైజేషన్ హియర్ ద బ్లాక్ కలర్ got merged with the surroundings and the white color alone is visible here in the black surroundings therefore the predaceous birds spotted it and devoured it modified version of darwinism which is also called the modern synthetic theory of organic evolution as i told you proposed by this huxley uh, de vries Uh, and then fisher uh, etc now what are the salient features of this uh, synthetic theory of evolution here gene mutations 
the second one is chromosomal mutations the third one is this uh, uh, variations natural selection etc so these things constitute what is called this synthetic theory of uh, uh, evolution or modern synthetic theory of evolution which is a modified version of this darwinism darwinism had no explanation for the arrival of new species here there is explanation for the arrival of the fittest that is mutation now next we take up certain questions which were already asked in the previous neat as well as aipmt examinations now my dear students you should focus your attention on solving these previous questions chapter wise very very important they are taken from exact lines of the content given in the ncert books so analogous structures are a result of monna 2016 lo ichinatuvanti di analogous structures are a result of divergent evolution homologous structures the divergent evolution analogous structures ante convergent evolution annu ante when organisms of different groups are to live in the same habitat so they are converging from different places into a common habitat like the fish like the ichthyosaur extinct reptile and this whale they all live in the sea so sea is an aquatic habitat for life in the aquatic habitat they need a streamlined body form so that uniform body form is there here and organs for propelling the body in the water maybe in the form of fins or flippers so your answer is convergent evolution if it were to be homologous structures then your answer will be divergent evolution the wings of bird and wings of an insect or entavi 2015 lo adigadu homologous structures and represent convergent evolution eppudu nana convergent evolution unte analogous an raavali kabatti homologous undade anni eliminate aipothane nana ni choices lo ikkada neeku rende unnai ra ఈ ఫోర్త్ది ఎందుకు కాకూడదు ఫైలోజెనెటిక్ స్ట్రక్చర్స్ అండ్ రిప్రజెంట్ డైవర్జెంట్ డైవర్జెంట్ కాదు మనకి ఇక్కడ అడిగింది మనకి ఏం అడిగాడు వింగ్స్ అడిగాడు వింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ బర్డ్ అండ్ వింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్సెక్ట్ అంటే దే ఆర్ సిమిలర్ ఇన్ దేర్ అపీరెన్స్ బట్ పర్ఫామ్ ద సేమ్ ఫంక్షన్ దట్ ఈస్ ఫ్లైట్ దే లిఫ్ట్ ద బాడీ ఇన్ టు ద ఎయిర్ బట్ దేర్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఈజ్ డిఫరెంట్ జస్ట్ నో ఐ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్డ్ in connection with the analogous organs in the form of illustration the wings of insects are chitinous outgrowths of the body whereas the wings of birds are modified forelimbs like our forelimb like our hand with humerus radius ulna carpals metacarpals and phalanges so your answer is analogous structures and represent convergent evolution ante in one question you have two concepts that is analogous organs and convergent evolution ikkada four limbs of cat lizard used in walking four limbs of whales used in swimming and four limbs of bat are used in flying these are an example of denik example i v homologous organs nana the eye of octopus and eye of cat shows different patterns of structure at they perform similar function different structure and origin similar function aithe em avta andi avi analogous organs avta andi ay rendu homologous anna manu ikkada so analogous organs that have evolved due to convergent evolution adi answer ikkada ah uh, the process by which an organism with different evolutionary history evolves similar phenotypic adaptations in response to a common environmental change is called 
no other than convergent evolution. Look at this sixth question. Evolution of different species in a given area starting from a point, a single place and spreading to other geographical areas is known as and organisms are moving in different directions, evolving different structures from a basic form. So, divergence. That is convergence, this is divergence. I say, evolution of different species are not. This is adaptive radiation. Now, peripatus, you may be knowing or may not be knowing. Peripatus is a living fossil which shows mixed characters of annelids and arthropods. Therefore, peripatus, which belongs to the phylum Onychophora, is the connecting link between arthropods and annelids. It exhibits mixed characters, sectional body form, uh, appendages like the parapodia in every segment. They are annelid characters. And the chitin, nephridia, Mm, apart from that coaxial gland, they are arthropod characters. So, this is peripatus is the connecting link between anilid and arthropoda.